Hey! Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I, like most girls who grew up in the United States in the early 90s, would always get the American Girl doll catalogs and I would just drool over all of these dresses that you could get for the dolls and of course I loved Samantha. Not only did she have my name, but this was me in elementary school. We looked alike, too. My parents said that I had to save up for it to get it. And I saved, and I saved, and I saved. And I eventually got her. And she was just my favorite toy. So much so that I took her to college with me. And now she sits in my sewing room. Also in 2018, I made this dress as a Halloween costume. It's not the best. Um, I actually pattern hacked it from a 1980s pattern. Um, it was my first attempt at doing something like that. It turned out okay. I'm pretty happy with it. But today, I'm going to make her cloak. I have wanted this cloak since I was a kid. And as an adult, cloaks are cool. So that's what I've decided to make today. I thought it would be a nice way to kind of get into pattern drafting. So the first thing I need to do is actually draft a block pattern that I can then base the cloak around. So let's see what I can do. I bought this book that kind of gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to draft this block pattern. Um, I didn't film any of the actual measuring portions because there was a lot of cursing and a lot of crying because um, I'm terrible at measuring. Terrible at it. When I cut out this pattern, I knew, I knew something had gone horribly wrong. Horribly wrong. But I decided to make a mock-up just to see how it looked and oh no oh no what yes <laughs> oh man that is glorious <laughs> okay plan b i think i'm going to use this pattern i know it fits me pretty well i've used it dozens of times it makes up the majority of the blouses in my wardrobe um, it is a little blousey in the back, so I think I'm going to add the darts from the block that I just made, because I think those actually did work. Um, and I know I'm going to have to shorten it, but let's just make it up and see how it goes. This worked out so much better. I ended up taking about an inch and a half off the waist and as you can see I added the darts in the back and then I had to take about a half an inch out of the shoulder. But yeah, it looks great. Here is a video of me being a floor goblin because this pattern was huge. Okay, first mock-up, not terrible, it's definitely way too long, but I made it long just in case. There's also, I don't know if you can see it, but there's this point that I need to get out here in the shoulder. Um, and I think I'm going to add maybe some volume to it. But I'm going to shorten it and come back and see what that does. I thought I would try the slash and spread method to get more volume into the bottom of the cape. What I should have done is just cut up to the waistline and added it there. But unfortunately, I cut all the way up to the neckline, which ended up making the neck way too big. <sighs> well, my little slash and spread experiment didn't work. Oh well, I can just go back to what I originally had. 
Um, I think I'm going to make this like two and a half inches larger. And yeah, I think I think I've got it pretty much figured out. I just need to make a collar. And then I think I'll be ready to actually cut it from the actual fabric. Because I am me, I decided I hated my design. I hated the A-line. Um, I had been looking at three different versions. There was the kid version of the cape, which is A-line, which is what I had originally planned on going with. And then there's the doll version, which is slightly more flared. And then there's the book version, which has a lot of volume. And I decided I liked the book version better. And the drafting book that I am using actually has a pattern for a circle cape. And so I decided to give that a try. This looks so much better. Ah, I love it. Now, let's make the real thing. I love this cape so much better. It gives me everything I wanted. It's basically a blanket that makes you look fancy. It has a ton of volume, which means I can just, I can just see it floating in the wind, which I'm really excited about. And I think it just, it suits me better. So I decided I'm definitely going with this version. And with that, I'm going to officially start working with my fashion fabric. I am using this wool blend plaid because, well, wool is expensive. Um, and I'm also using this cotton flannel as the lining because uh, re-blanket. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to piece this tiny little corner. I was hoping not to do it because, um, you know, pattern matching, but at least it's just the tiniest little corner. I could either do that or have a back seam, but I decided I don't want a back seam. But as they say, I guess piecing is period. Well, here is some actual sewing footage for this sewing video, since I don't have any yet. Uh, this is me putting together the actual cape. And then the lining of the cape. Look at that. It's a sewing video now. Oh, that's a heavy cape. Good thing I'm making it in February when we only have a couple more weeks left of winter because I live in Texas so maybe I'll get to wear it once but I love it so far Ooh. I'm gonna let it hang overnight and tomorrow to let that hem do what it's gonna do before I level it off and tomorrow I'll work on the capelet and collar bits I'm trying to decide which looks better half circle or full circle. I think full circle. I think once I get the two layers on, plus the trim, and it won't be beige, I think the full circle is the way to go. Yeah. For a non-sewing update, I'm about to get this light changed out for something so much prettier. The previous owners of this house, for some reason, installed this low hanging light um, in both this room and the room across from it. And it's just, it's so low, I keep hitting it. So, oh, I'm excited. It's so much better. I can't, nice I can't reach it if I tried. <sighs> it's Friday! I've been working on this project for an entire week now. And I don't feel like I've gotten anything done. Granted, I had a big round of self-doubt on Monday and Tuesday 
and Wednesday. And so I didn't get a lot done on those days. I did the mock-ups on those days. But I could have done more. But self-doubt, yay! But I'm feeling good about the project now. Um, and it's the weekend and I can get a whole lot more work done on it. Um, I got all the other pieces cut out and now I just need to sew them up. I couldn't find the right type of braid, but I had a ton of this soutache in my stash. Um, I know that there's a specific soutache foot that you can use, but I don't have one of those, so I'm just very carefully sewing this on. Okay, I've added some interfacing to the facings uh, where the buttonholes and buttons are going to go. And I'm just going to sew these down and then I start the long, arduous process of sewing in the lining. You know what I've been wondering about since I started this project? For as long as I can remember, I loved Edwardian fashion. like. I always wanted to wear the frilliest, frothiest dresses when I was a kid because they reminded me of Edwardian fashion. I also started getting the American Girl doll catalogs really early in age. And of course I was going to like Samantha. Do I like Edwardian fashion because of Samantha? Do I like Edwardian fashion because a doll company decided to name a doll Samantha? Have I started a YouTube channel centered around Edwardian fashion because of a doll company? I got the lining sewn on. It looks great up here, but uh, it starts curling away from itself, and I don't know what's causing that. So I'm gonna have to run some experiments and try to figure out what I did wrong. It fits so nicely up here. Look at how flat it is. And then it curls away. <sighs> I ended up adding some interfacing and understitching the edge. It's not laying completely flat, but it is definitely flatter than it was. After fighting, with this collar piece for the majority of the day. I think I have figured it out. I was going to line it completely, but then it wouldn't fit and it was so frustrating. So I ended up just using bias binding on the inside, which I think works really well and it also takes down some of the bulk at the collar anyway. Time for the most terrifying part, opening these armholes. Wish me luck. I kind of stopped recording because I've been on the struggle bus. Let me show you what I've been doing. So I finished off the neckline with bias tape and I'm I've decided not to attach the collar to the cape itself, um, you know, for versatility. And then I also, if you can see, it's kind of dark, but I did hand sewn buttonholes because the fabric was just way too thick for my <laughs> sewing machine. They're not the best, but you know. They're functional. I sewed on bias tape on the hem to finish that off, and it's done.
made some matching spats with some leftover fabric. I didn't bother filming any of it, but I have linked the pattern down below and it was super easy to follow. I love this cape. It turned out so good. I just, ugh, I loved running around the park in it. it uh, just living out my childhood fantasies of just having this gorgeous swishy cape. I love it and it is so nice and warm. It is perfect. And the great thing is I can take the collar off and it's a completely different cape. It's wonderful. Ugh, I love it so much. Um, I actually made this at the perfect time because turns out this week is going to be at or below freezing for most of the week. So now I have my nice blanket cape. <laughs> I don't know why I thought this would be an easy project. If I didn't have to finish anything, yeah, it would have been fine. The cape was super easy to sew together. Just everything else was hard. But I did learn uh, several things. I had to look up how to hand sew buttonholes, which there's a great Bernadette Banner video that um, is perfect. I will link that down below. And oh, I also learned a lot how patterns work which I didn't know before. You'd think that sewing for, what, four years, I would know these things, but no. No, I actually learned quite a bit about dart placement and slashing and spreading and how it actually is supposed to work. One thing I've learned from this project is there's a reason why lining is usually silky fabric. Flannel was a wonderful choice to make a blanket, which it is very blankety. It's wonderful. It's so nice and warm. But the flannel static clings to the wool. And then I cut open the arm and the lining got all messed up and I ended up having to put in this little triangle piece and yeah piecing is period though I mean I'm sure they didn't piece to cover up their mistakes they made but you know we're going to just say that like it's economical right I'm just using up all the fabric that I have well that's all for now um if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and leave a comment and um, I'll see you in two weeks with another video.